In the last video we went through all the steps required to create your presentation slides ready for your presentation using Novamind Platinum. In this video we will go through all the options while you are giving your presentation. When you want to start your presentation you can either use the Start Presentation menu item on the Presenter menu or click on the button to start the presentation. This will start the presentation in full screen mode. If you want to run your presentation in a window instead of full screen, hold down the Option key. The menu item will change to Start Presentation in Window. The size of the window will depend on what you have selected in the Windowed Presentation View Size menu. This can be very useful if you want to have other things on the screen at the same time, or if you're on a webinar and want to share the presentation at a certain size, or if you're creating a video from your presentation. When you choose the size of the presentation to be one of the standard sizes, Novamind will resize the window so that the content area is the specified size, so that if you're recording the presentation for a video, you can crop it to that size and see just the content without the window title bar. If you haven't turned off the introductory slide, this is the first slide you'll see. The background will cycle through a whole lot of gentle animations in random order to keep things interesting for your audience without being distracting. As you can see, the title and subtitle are the ones that we set up in the previous video, and the scrolling text comes across from time to time. Down at the bottom right, you'll see the Created Using Novamind text and URL because we said that we wanted to help to spread the word about Novamind. At the bottom left side, you'll see the presentation controls. Let's go through them and explain them. The first one is the presentation mode control. At the moment, we're presenting the slides, but we can jump to edit mode if we want to edit the mind map, and of course our slides will update automatically. We can even add and remove slides during the presentation, and the presentation gets updated automatically. Also, you can switch to walkthrough mode if you want, and do some or all of a walkthrough presentation and then come back to your slide-based presentation. The details of giving a walkthrough presentation are covered in another tutorial video. And of course, you can exit the presentation from this menu, or from the main menu, or just by pressing escape, or Q, or command period. If you want to be reminded of the shortcut keys at any time during your presentation, you can press the question mark or slash key, and it will show the help screen. Press any key to close the help screen and continue with your presentation. If you're using an Apple remote for your presentation, you can switch presentation modes by pressing and holding the menu button. It will cycle through the presentation modes. Next, you can see the slide selector. You can access the slide selector by clicking on this button or using the plus or minus or equals keys or typing a number between 1 and 9 to open the slide selector with that slide selected. This slide number is based on the slides that are included in the presentation, that is, excluding hidden slides. Using an Apple remote, you can show the slide selector by pressing the menu button. When the slide selector is displayed, you can either double click on the slide that you want, or use the arrow keys to highlight the one you want and press return to present that slide. If you're using an Apple remote, you can use the plus, minus, forward and reverse buttons to select the slide that you want, and then the play pause button to use that slide. To exit the slide selector without selecting a new slide, just click on the slide selector button, or type plus, minus or equals again, or on the Apple remote, press the menu button again. And the other two buttons are ones for going to the next or previous slide. There are lots of ways of going to the next slide. Using the keyboard, you can press the spacebar, the right arrow, return, in, enter, or page down to go to the next slide. Using the mouse, you can click on the slide that's being displayed, or the right arrow button on the controls. Using the Apple remote, you can click the play pause button, or the forward button. To go to the previous slide using the keyboard, press the left arrow, P, or page up. Using the mouse, you can click on the left button on the controls, and using the Apple remote, you can use the rewind button. Let's start our presentation by pressing the spacebar to go to the first slide. If you remember, we wanted to just have the title and the first level topics showing, and we wanted to zoom right in to the topics. Let's just go straight on to the next slide. You can see that the topics expand and collapse as required, and the mind map zooms to show the topics required for the next slide. On this slide, you can see that we've zoomed right into these topics, so the adornment image looks a bit pixelated because we've zoomed right in beyond the natural size of the image. But the task and other information indicators still look good, as we mentioned when we were setting up the slides. Now on the next slide, we've just set it to use the normal slide sizing, so the zoom will never be more than 200%, and the adornment images look great. 
During your presentation, you can draw on the screen by clicking and dragging using a mouse or trackpad. This can be useful for highlighting areas of interest or things that you're talking about at the time. The first line that you draw is red, and then different colors are used for the other lines you draw so that you can refer to the lines by color if you like. Lines are removed when you move to another slide in the presentation, and you can remove just the last drawn line by pressing either delete or the backspace key, and if you want to remove all the lines without going to another slide, just press the C key. The lines you draw during the presentation are just temporary and are not stored in your document at all. You can also highlight topics during your presentation. Double click on the topic that you want to select. It'll be highlighted with a red border. If you want to highlight other topics, hold down the Shift key while double clicking on them. You can also use the context menu by right clicking on a topic and select whether you want to select that topic only, the topic and its immediate children, that topic and its descendants, or that topic and its siblings. To deselect the topics without going to the next slide, double click on the background. If a topic has notes on it, you can show the notes by double clicking on that topic to select it and pressing T, or just click on the notes indicator. To hide the notes, click outside the area where the note is displayed or type any key. Novamind makes the notes text bigger so that it's readable on a presentation, and you probably don't want to have long notes, but if the note is too long, you can scroll it, and also you can use a mouse or trackpad to select text to highlight it. To hide the notes, click outside the area where the note is displayed or type any key. If you're in the middle of a presentation and want to stop and hide the mind map so as to not distract people, you can cover the presentation with a white screen or black screen. To cover with white, press W, or to cover with black, press B. To return to the presentation, just click anywhere or press any key. Although the scroll bars are hidden while presenting, if you have a trackpad you can still scroll using a two finger swipe. You can also pan by pressing and holding the space bar while clicking and dragging with the mouse. You can use pinch zooming if you have a trackpad, and if you're using an Apple remote, you can press and hold the plus button to zoom in or press and hold the minus button to zoom out. When you view a slide, the topics are expanded or collapsed as per the slide definition, but if you do need to expand or contract topics manually, the controls are still enabled both for just clicking to expand and collapse or right clicking for the context menu. The hyperlink and attachment controls are active so you can click them and the required application will be opened to show the link or file. If you're using Mac OS 10.7 or later and running the presentation in full screen mode, it will switch you out of the space that is used to do the presentation, but when you go back to Novamind, it will be there as it was before. So let's just quickly go through the rest of the slides. This one is where we had selected a shape, the floating topic, and the slides topic to make sure that they all show on the slide. This one is where we just had an image shape selected. This one is where we had a floating topic selected so that it shows the floating topic and its subtopics. And now you can see that we switched to another mind map for this slide. Then, if you remember, we duplicated the previous slide so that we could switch back to that for context before continuing with the presentation. This slide reminds you of the different types of object that you can use to define your slides. Then, this one is where we had a dummy mind map with a whole lot of shapes that we can use to switch to as standalone slides. In this case, we had selected the box with the text in it and the star to define the slide. And here, we were talking about having topics highlighted automatically when you go into the slide. This is also handy if you're using a remote control and want to have the topics highlighted. And of course, if you're using a mouse, you can double click on topics to select them as we talked about before. In this slide, you can see that these topics and subtopics were highlighted, but notice that the attached shape was not highlighted and the link line was not highlighted because they would need to be explicitly included in the slide definition to be highlighted. Note that although shapes are not automatically highlighted when you say you want to highlight topics, they are included in the area used for the topic, since a shape is considered to be part of the topic itself, even though it can be physically separate. And that's the end of the presentation. On the exit slide, you can see that the controls are still there, so you can use the slide selector or back arrow to go to the slides in the presentation, and you can switch presentation modes while you're still in the presenter, if, for instance, you want to use the walkthrough mode for ad hoc highlighting of topics during question time after your talk. So that's pretty much it for the presentation of your slides. 
there is another short video that explains what else you can do with your presentation slides to export them for other purposes or print them as handouts for your audience.